Despite the fact that the eighth season is already in full swing, I am feeling like Jon Snow. I still know nothing about how the show is going to end. While myself and other fans are desperately trying to find out anything about the ending of Game of Thrones, the cast has warned us that we may need some real therapy after watching the last episode. For instance, Amelia Clark was plunged into shock after reading the script, so much so that she walked around London speechless for three hours. And Gwendolyn Christie's face turned bright red when she found out the ending. I cried for two hours. I was absolutely uh, inconsolable. I'll share more on that with you right away and also about how the cast has been surviving their lives after Game of Thrones. Stay here to find out about what Maisie Williams stole from the set, what is Amelia Clark's idea for the Thrones spin-off, and why Gwendolyn Christie was the only one to keep the ending a secret from her life partner. I'm Jeremy and this is Also. As it turns out, the King in the North was the last one to hear about the ending of the show. Harrington found out the ending in front of the entire cast during a very emotional table reading of the final episode. Kit was very shocked at certain events unfolding. And then I blubbed my eyes out. I cried, I cried, confessed the actor. For Kit, Game of Thrones was a turbulent young adulthood spent grappling with a once in a lifetime job and the fame that came with it. Although recently, Harrington revealed the dark times in Game of Thrones that led him to go to therapy. According to the actor, all the fame on top of screw about his fate left him feeling pretty vulnerable and paranoid. He wasn't talking to anyone. I had to feel very grateful for what I have, but I felt incredibly concerned about whether I could even f***ing act, he confesses. Fortunately, Kit managed to beat his fears and now he feels blessed about the entire experience. When he was asked about his most remarkable partnership on the show, he pointed out, you already know the answer, don't you? My favorite actor to work with was Rose Leslie. There was something really special about working with Rose. Yeah, right. There was something really special about working with Rose. So I married her. So what is Kid doing now? You've probably seen him recently on Saturday Night Live. In an interview with Jimmy Fallon, Kid revealed that he was really nervous before the show and even called his mom for support as it was his first time doing stand-up comedy. She supported her son like a real mother would with the words, but you don't do it. You are really good at the sad stuff. Uh, apparently she knows nothing about Jon Snow. By the way, Kit personally hates when people use the you know nothing phrase, so if you end up meeting him one day, please don't say that. The only time Harrington did enjoy hearing it was on his wedding day. Kit's brother had a speech as a best man where he said, looking at the woman you are marrying, it shows you do know something, Jon Snow. It's the only reason I'm not killing you. Okay, I'll admit it as well. That was sweet. After getting married to Rose Leslie, it appears the kid had no immediate plans to return to our screens anytime soon. Instead, he's enjoying a break and pursuing other projects. Let's move on to the forbidden lovers on screen and great friends off screen, Nikolai Coaster Waldo and Lena Headey. Nikolai compares himself to a little Bambi on ice during the times when he had just joined the set for the first time. After some years of perseverance, the experience helped him learn how to walk with pride and joy. Lena is also very grateful for her time on Game of Thrones, though she is happy to get rid of all the hate and shame brought to her because of her cruel character. Shame! Neither of them have made a big deal out of the ending of the show. Nikolai said that he doesn't know if it has changed his life per se, as he still has the same wife, the same kids, the same house, the same old Skoda. Though he added that the eight years of filming were quite an extraordinary experience for all of them. I bet they were. Fortunately, we will see both of the Lannisters on screen this year, but in other roles of course. Nikolai will be in Domino, a crime thriller based in the Netherlands where a police officer is seeking justice for his murdered partner. By the way, he will be there alongside fellow Game of Thrones cast member Carice Van Houten, who plays Mel Sandra. And Lena's next film, The Flood, is currently in post-production and will be released later this year. The third surviving Lannister, played by Peter Dinklage, is pretty down to earth when it comes to sharing his feelings about the show's end. Perhaps the sarcastic and skeptical nature of the Lannisters is still in his blood. In an interview with Variety regarding the end of HBO's mega hit, Peter responded that it's the perfect time to end Game of Thrones. Though he did add that this is one of the most realistic shows he has ever done that also happens to have dragons and undead people in it. Oh, I can't agree more. It's going to be very hard to say goodbye to play Tyrion. Similar to Tyrion, Peter accepts life's changes without being dramatic. Oh, you gotta move on. Yeah. Gotta move on. Or perhaps it is because the actor has been too busy with other projects since Game of Thrones ended. In 2018, Dinklage produced and starred in I Think We're Alone Now, a post-apocalyptic drama. Dinklage also appeared in Avengers Infinity War as a giant space dwarf. 
Another actress whom you saw in the Marvel films is the Dark Phoenix, Jean Grey herself, Sophie Turner. Things are certainly going to be exciting for Sophie Turner in 2019, as this year she's going to marry her fiancé, singer and actor Joe Jonas. Ten years ago, everyone would have gone crazy after finding out that Joe Jonas is getting married. And now it's all upside down and the throne star is the one on everybody's lips. Sophie Turner is getting married. You know to that singer with the pretty face, uh, who has brothers, what's his name again? Go J. Uh, anyhow, the two are planning to tie the knot this summer if Jack Gleason doesn't snatch Sophie from the singer. Yes, the King Joffrey himself. I'm talking about that funny pic from the recent premiere and reunion of the cast where Joan Jonas' fiancé hugs Jack Gleason and Jonas was like, what the f I thought this dude was dead. But I'm really jealous of him as he already knows how the show is going to end. He has been on set constantly with Sophie, but had to sign an NDA to keep the secrets of the thrones. Sophie is really sad about the end of Game of Thrones as she has grown up and changed so much during the show. She recalls that her favorite scene was the one during which she reunited with Maisie. Huge, if you know what I mean. Although it was a very hard one for the rest of the crew, as the girls were too overwhelmed and could not stop laughing during the filming. Nevertheless, the scene looked awesome to me and I'm pretty sure that you are with me on that. Sophie finds it's hard to work on different projects since Thrones, as she's gotten used to high level of professionalism in the show. She's been disappointed so many times after appearing on new sets or just reading scripts and being outraged, like, what idiot wrote that? The actress confesses that her and Maisie were terribly spoiled at the very beginning of their careers, and stunning scenarios, stunning directors, stunning scenery and props, stunning camera work, it all made it pretty stunning. Well, Sophie, imagine how hard it is for the fans to watch other shows and constantly compare them to the epic episodes of Thrones. Her on-screen sis and off-screen best friend, Maisie Williams, also cannot get used to the fact that the show has ended. She turned 22 on the day Game of Thrones started its final season. Over the last 10 years, Maisie found great confidence and she has no doubt it is all thanks to the incredible Thrones team. For now, she'll keep Arya in her heart, but she also kept something from the set. Maisie took Arya's famous coin and one of her jackets from season 8, covered in mud and blood so it's very, very Game of Thrones. The actress reflects on the last 10 years saying that she and Sophie Turner were both thrown into the water and nobody taught them how to swim. That is precisely why Arya's character is so genuine. As Maisie says, she went to auditions with holes in her stockings and now she's in all those fancy clothes. Her life has changed completely. As Game of Thrones took up Maisie's teenage years, she now can't get enough of doing crazy, silly teenage things like getting tattoos and dyeing her hair in wild colors. For instance, Sophie and Maisie both inked the date they were casted in the show in 2009, and Maisie also has a nobody inscription on her neck. After the curtain closes on Game of Thrones, Maisie's fans won't have to wait long to see her again though. She's already completed work on the sci-fi horror film The New Mutants, I can't wait to see that, which hits theaters in the United States in August 2019. The other Game of Thrones star who is quite upset about its ending is Gwendolyn Christie. The actress revealed that during her first read of the script, she went all bright red in the face and got really upset. She couldn't believe that this is the way Game of Thrones Thrones is going to end. Anyhow, she kept the shocking secret to herself. Christy was probably the only one from the cast who actually did not tell her partner how the show ends. She decided that her sweetheart should suffer just as much as fans do. <laughs> As Brienne of Tarth, Gwendolyn has been trained well in being a warrior, and it looks like that's not going to go to waste in any way. After signing up to the Star Wars franchise, Gwendolyn has been voicing Captain Phasma in the spin-off TV series Star Wars Resistance, and this year she's starring in The Personal History of David Copperfield, a drama alongside brilliant Tilda Swinton. Plus, she keeps shocking everyone with her crazy taste in dresses, which her partner, a fashion designer, surely has in common with her. Perhaps this love for fashion is what made them fall in love in the first place, but I'm pretty sure her hubby fell in love with her laugh before anything else. <laughs> You didn't think I forgot about the Mother of Dragons, did you? Hell no, she's my favorite. Amelia Clark refers to the end of the show as a real catharsis. Although, right after reading the final scripts for season 8, she spent three hours walking around London aimlessly. It's hard to tell if it was just from gloom or shock that it was really ending. The actress shared that after they finished the shoot, she was glued to a glass of wine the whole day and complained to everyone, I've drunk so much already, why won't it get any easier? Oh, I know what you mean, Khaleesi. And now Amelia admits that she's been dreaming of a Thrones spinoff, which would be about dragons. 
She assumed it would be interesting to hear the story of the dragons in Westeros, how they appeared and how they were exterminated by the Targaryen dynasty. She added that dragons are wonderful creatures and they do need more on-screen time. I hope the producers will listen to her idea as it's pretty awesome. Apart from dreams about thrones, Amelia already found a place in another franchise, appearing as Kira in Solo, A Star Wars Story. However, the film received mixed reviews and it is unknown whether she'll appear in the reprise. On top of that, she's due to appear in two films by the end of this year. A rom-com, Last Christmas, which is based in London, and Above Suspicion, which tells the true and shocking love story of a scandal in the Appalachian Mountains. I can't wait to see her on screen again, can you? And by the way, I'm sure you've already seen the first episodes of Season 8. What are your thoughts on it? Share them with me in the comments below, and as always, thanks for watching NASA.